Welcome and hello to the virtual happy hour with the Chicago Museum and Sacred Transformations. This is, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Uh, kicking off a four part series uh, a, uh, called Libations in conjunction with a wonderful exhibition that uh, I and our speaker today, Eric Dean Spruth, uh, we have the privilege of co-curating the exhibition in this, this four part uh, speaker series. I should back up though a little bit and say that uh, right now we're, we're uh, broadcasting on the Chicago Bruseum Facebook page and our Zoom channel. Uh, the Chicago Bruseum has been hosting these virtual happy hour conversations uh, at least once a week since March when we, uh, we were um, thrust into this world of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, and uh, so it, losing uh, our community, losing our community ac access to uh, these, our sacred third spaces, social rooms, and the, the bar, uh, the, the gym, wherever, uh, as, so, uh, as a, a way to maintain the social connection we keep talking about uh, distancing and, and uh, we want to ensure that while we are physically distanced, we can remain socially connected and, and, and maintain that sense of community. And so having these virtual happy hours has been a great way to, uh, to maintain that sense of community over these past few months. And uh, just to remind everybody, you know, this is this is your space, uh, our community space, our community tap room, our, our chat room. Take advantage of the chat box on Zoom and uh, in Facebook uh, and uh, share where you're uh, tuning in from. Uh, share what you're, what you're uh, drinking, what your libations might be at the, the moment, whether it's uh, you know, alcoholic or not, uh, and, uh, and enjoy. We're gonna dive in in a second to our speaker this evening, Eric Dean Spruth, and uh, later we'll have some, oh, we'll open up for some time for, for some conversations. Uh, I'm going to go through and make sure is, uh, everyone's muted on here. Uh, but uh, and also, though, uh, yeah, well, why don't I just go ahead and dive in and, and, and introduce Eric? Uh, and I was just joking with you, Eric, that uh, you know, it's I, I've known you for for only 14 years here, but uh, it's always helpful for me to refresh myself because I, I, I'm just um, and I, I, I never cease to be. Uh, I'm floored by uh, all of the things that you got your fingers in. Uh, just a tremendous uh, asset to the community. Uh, Eric uh, holds a master's in art therapy from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Working towards your doctorate at the moment. Uh, Eric is uh, um, the founder and executive director of Sacred Transformations, a uh, non for profit 501c3 organization. Eric will share a lot more with us about what Sacred Transformations is. Uh, and But it involves uh, a sneak peek, it involves tattooing, art therapy, uh, and uh, self. A transformation and identity. Uh, and the Libations exhibition, Eric can share much more with us what that's all about. Um, housed uh, presently exhibition, an exhibition that's taking place throughout the month of August uh, at Fluid Coffee Bar in Michigan City, Indiana, brings together a whole variety of artists contributing to the exhibition, uh, celebrating, as we all saw in the tagline uh, for this uh, event, celebrating the uh, 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 the um, what libations mean beverages the celebratory and ceremonial aspects of beverages but also acknowledging the that uh, alcohol consumption can also have a, a negative impact on us and does and, and can destroy lives and so uh, this is what I think is really special about this series is bringing together um, the sacred transformations and the Chicago Bruseum with the Bruseum of course we we love beverage we, beer we know it's the, it's the greatest uh, drink in the history of, of, uh, of civilization, uh, and, but uh, it's important uh, for us to acknowledge that um, alcohol altogether
together uh, can it can have very negative damaging consequences and especially at this time when we are uh, isolated uh, when we are in self quarantine uh, resurfacing a lot of patterns of addiction that many of us might uh, um, might be uh, victim to uh, so that's in a large part what the uh, libations exhibition and what this series is uh, is all about so I, I think with that maybe Eric uh, how about I, I hand it over to you uh, and you can yeah take it from here thank you so much for being here well, thank you for the opportunity and your friendship and uh, fellow service to others. Um, I met Lucas at the Art Institute of Chicago, and I remember the day I met him like it was yesterday with Mickey. And uh, we've been, um, uh, as they like to say, making good trouble, I think, since we met as far as uh, improving access to uh, services and access to awareness of uh, the creative, creative perspective and helping to celebrate that creative perspective with a lot of people who may um, traditionally or um, as a result of socioeconomic or physical disabilities, other types of mental challenges, not be able to access um, traditional museums. And I'm really proud of you, Lucas, for uh, your uh, partnership with the Chicago Brew Museum and being able to bring um, this platform, now our platform as co-curators of the current exhibition um, to this, this uh, viewing and listening audience. So I'm, um, uh, this is my fourth Zoom presentation. My first was in Rome for, for a group of art therapy students in Rome about three or four years ago. And it was an amazing experience then. And it's amazing now I'm blushing. Uh, but if I had a group of people, I would not be blushing. Um, so the, the media itself is a little more challenging for me because I can't see you all um, or feel, feel your presence in the room. Um, so uh, I appreciate the challenge and the opportunity. And for each of you out there listening, I don't know how many people there are. Um, I always like to begin with something that's very important to me um, is to acknowledge your generosity, to share your time and attention um, with this topic, with something that's really important to me. And I um, will do my very best to keep it interesting and to hopefully uh, end up leaving it off as a purposeful investment of your time and attention to uh, celebrate uh, something that I think is really important, um, which is uh, kicking off with the presentation, um, family, um, community, and when those things aren't available, um, being able to celebrate a moment alone and really uh, cherish that time um, as an important, important crossroads and an important opportunity to be alive. So you see my family pictured here, that's my wife and our son named Drake and our daughter named Isis. And that's us toasting uh, this year, 2020, just uh, about uh, eight months ago, uh, kicking off the new year together with a, a libation. Um, if you were all physically in front of me, I'd ask you to raise your hands. How many of you may have seen the movie Throw Mama from the Train? And I know you're muted. I see a thumbs up from Lucas. Um, I've, I've been preoccupied as a, a person all my life thinking about really what makes a moment a memory. Um, why is it we celebrate um, certain things, sometimes things that we've been commercially led to believe to be important, or um, just social norms that, you know, taking a picture next to a thing that you travel to go see and smiling and putting your arms around each other, but as soon as the photo is done, arms go down, expressions change. And um, you know, you've, you've created this, this snapshot of a memory to remember being someplace. Um, but my question has always been, what, what, what really makes a, a real memory, something that really is something you can connect to? And for all of us, it's, it's a very different, uh, different type of experience. And I was moved at the moment, and I, I get emotionally stirred just thinking about this scene in Throw Mama from the Train where Danny DeVito's character who befriends Billy Crystal, who's his writing teacher, because Danny DeVito wants to become more expressive. He wants to do a better job connecting with other people and wants to become a writer. Um, and Billy Crystal's character somehow begrudgingly comes to his house and Danny DeVito's character asks him um, kind of in a naive off, off kind of hand way, would you like to see my coin collection? And Billy Crystal is nice and he, he says, sure, I'd like to see your coin collection. And Danny DeVito's character proceeds to take out an envelope and lay out about five coins. 
And each of those coins represent a limited but extremely important moment in his life um, where he explains to Billy Crystal's character, this is the time my daddy took me to the corner store and let me keep the change when he bought, bought himself cigarettes. This is the time my dad took me to the carnival and we played, played a game and he let me keep the change when we played the game. And about five coins later, that's his coin collection. And uh, I'll tell you, if that doesn't move you, I don't know what would. Um, two amazing actors really portraying um, a really important um, moment that, that, that represents an opportunity to find um, personal meaning, personal connection, and a way of connecting and holding on to something really decent, um, his coin collection. So um, I wanted to start with that as a, a, as a, a truly influencing uh, force. I've been uh, extremely influenced by um, movies, cartoons, um, in my life, and I believe in uh, modern mythology. I don't think something has to be purely old to be purely good. And I think this is a great example of something that can help you connect and be respectful to others. Another such scene in a movie that was always very powerful to me was um, Blade Runner, um, where Roy, uh, this alleged machine that is uh, void of any type of uh, real personal experience, uh, Nothing's really real. It's all planted in his head to fool him to go do all these jobs. And when he's fighting for the last um, last moments of his life, um, he explains to um, the Blade Runner, the guy hunting him down to terminate him, um, that he's seen things that you could never imagine. And this is that scene, uh, teardrops in the rain monologue. So any of you have seen the the movie? I th I think it's. I think it's one of the most powerful moments in the film where the fighting stops and there's definitely a mutual respect for the love of life. Um, the love of life and cherishing um, each of the moments um, up to the very end. And then this uh, slide here on the PowerPoint, it took me a while to find it, but it was really important to me to find this part in the film where they're, one of the other androids is qualifying that they are real, that they have these memories. and. How could I not have memories if, you know, I, I remember these things. And there's some epitome, whether it's the robot or the, the, the narrator of the film or the Blade Runner, who realizes that these are photographs that have been shared and implanted in these robots and these machines. These memories have been implanted to give them a sense of something that they might lose if they don't do their job. Their motivation is their motivation is that they're real, that they, they count and that they have to fight, they have to do these jobs because they have something to go back to. And um, I remember thinking that that was very beautiful and I, I still feel that way. So onward and upward to libation, beverages, um, and the human experience. Um, so it's said, or it's scientifically proved that we are, ourselves, we are ourselves made up primarily of water of liquid um, mixed into all kinds of concoctions that compose our, our lungs, our skin, our muscles, our brain mass, our kidneys, all the different things that make us real. Um, and if we, um, Lucas uh, referred to the, the demonstrative effects of alcohol, um, but also you know anything in overconsumption, even water can be toxic. Um, so it's a matter of keeping a balance. It's a matter of feeding um, feeding your body, and as my um, beloved environmental science teacher, Mr. Mathwig at Moraine Valley Community College taught me and helped so many people internalize, it's diversity that equals stability, um, not just in your consumption of uh, liquid uh, libations, beverages, but also in the people, places, and things you spend time with. It's diversity that equals stability. Um, um, I don't remember the name of the snowman. We practiced this. Anybody remember the name of the snowman? Orloff. Orloff. So if you've seen the movie Frozen, I think that, again, that actor did a phenomenal job bringing life to what we would typically be on Frosty the Snowman, kind of dismiss as something that um, you may not believe in. You know, when you're a kid, you might believe in these things, Scooby-Doo, Snowman, Santa. But you get older and people tell, they kind of take that away from you. So it's unproven that water has memory, um, but in the same way, I still believe in lots of things myself as a nearly 55-year-old person. Um, I do believe that there is a, a truth to um, water and other dissolved uh, liquids 
having having um, having a memory, having a memory. My son and I this summer built a, a, a conservatory greenhouse, a tree house. So it's all made of glass and we always look for windows that people are throwing out. And we garbage picked a, a whole bunch of windows for a, from a house that's over a hundred years old. And the man explained to us, um, and um, I had a little bit of knowledge of this, that even glass is in a liquid state. It's just moving very slow. And he showed me that these windows that sat on this home for a hundred years, hot and cold, hot and cold, were really thick at the bottom. The glass was thick at the bottom and thin, almost paper thin on top. So the idea of what's in a liquid state, what's in a frozen state, and um, whether or not these elements can hold memories, uh, and minimally it'd be impossible to say that they don't hold particles that make them have distinctive flavors. To, the, to this day, one of the best coffees I ever had was coffee made with well water up in Viroqua, Wisconsin. Uh, very powerful, uh, very distinctive taste. So if, if minimally the, the particles that are within the different compounds definitely affect um, their, their flavor. So what is a libation? Um, the idea of, uh, of saying libation and understanding its uh, traditional definition, I think are two important things to make it dis uh, distinct to distinguish. Um, it's the idea of honoring. So pouring out a liquid to honor a deity or something other than yourself. Um, we are a pretty self-consumed society. So the idea of self-service, the idea of uh, service to others, the idea of taking care of yourself before you take care of someone else, the oxygen mask drops down an airplane, don't put it on the baby, put it on you so you could take care of other people. So again, diversity equals uh, stability and keeping a balance in all things that we're doing and understanding what we're saying and what we're doing and thinking a little more about it is a, a preoccupation for me sometimes to a nuisance, but ultimately I'm happy for the work because it's led to um, me being more happy with myself and feeling more comfortable. So the idea of pouring out a liquid and the, the over commercialization of that being connected somehow to an intoxicating experience. And then that the word intoxication immediately for most people being drawn to the consumption of alcohol, wine, beer, um, it really isn't true. So, you know, just to kind of excite the conversation a little bit, if anyone um, could not relate to it, I'd be surprised. But the, uh, the idea of being intoxicated by, by a, a woman, a man, being intoxicated by a landscape, a work of art, uh, the smell of fresh air, um, it can be intoxicating. And it, it should be. You know, the idea of being um, welcomely overwhelmed by something other than uh, what you're being told to be, you know, this is quality, this is quality. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about it versus just, this is a moment that's happening and I'm taking the time to recognize it and celebrate it. A drink, a drink is a liquid intended for human consumption. Um, so going on here, the idea of uh, plain drinking water, soft drinks, co uh, hot chocolate, coffee, tea. Um, our our co-host here, Lucas Livingston is planning on uh, elaborating a great deal on um, alcohol and its use in antiquities and uh, the influence over people. Um, and I'm really excited about his talk, so don't forget to tune in. Lucas, what day is your talk? Uh, when is it? It's two weeks from tonight, right? <laughs> so listening yeah. audience, don't miss it. He's an extremely smart guy. I love listening to Lucas. So I think he's going to talk about um, its history um, within us as a human people around the world, and he's very well spoken. Um, but again, this is a this is a, a, a physiological need for our bodies that that has become ceremonial, and that ceremonial occasion uh, sometimes includes people. Um, here is uh, uh, the host uh, having some wine in a church, and a lot of times it excludes people um, too uh, that can't take communion, um, they can't partake because they didn't have a communion. So um, I'm looking forward to his talk, um, but a lot of the work I do uh, with Sacred Transformations, which we we'll talk about a little bit, is, um, is as inclusive as inclusive can be, uh, bringing people together and celebrating what we have in common. Uh, beverage, any various liquid drinking, um, including water, again, a single serving. Um, so this could be a singular experience or something that you are sharing. Um, this is a coffee that I had on an airplane on the way to uh, do some really exciting, important things. 
And um, it's an example of being alone, but really taking the time to celebrate the moment. Um, and my fascination with celebrating what makes a moment um, powerful, what, what helps you to hold on to a moment. Um, so looking at this picture, I immediately go back to that exact moment, much so, much more so that if I had taken a picture perhaps with the people I was with or more associated to what I was doing at the time. Um, so it's just, it's just a moment in and of itself that um, a lot of the libations uh, artwork that I create and through the program have helped, tried to help others. And this, this particular uh, showing has got a really nice uh, grouping of artists, um, old and young, male, female, thinking about the same subject. So in 2005 was the first exhibition um, at the Red Cup in Chesterton, Indiana, 2006, 2007. And it probably would have kept going on consecutively, um, but I ended up having an opportunity to trade the entire show, 18 frame photographs, um, to the man who owned the Bear Creek Coffee Shop um, on uh, State Street in Chicago for coffee beans. Um, so he has the whole show and it's kind of stopped then. I, I felt like it was a, a good run. And the 18 photographs represented photographs of uh, beverages that I shared with people, coffee, water, tea, or something that I had by myself um, all around the world. As an art therapist, I had the opportunity to travel around the world. Um, and I still travel uh, significantly. And <clears throat> again, looking to engage um, different societies, different uh, ways of being, um, different communities. Um, the one thing that we have in common absolutely, absolutely all around the world is we drink. And a lot of uh, developed societies or primitive societies or whatever kind of group of people, um, we have to drink. We have to drink. We have to fulfill the, the missing water in our body. Every time we, we um, go to the bathroom, it's time to drink more water. So it's something we all can relate to. And um, these photographs, um, I don't have them. I gave them away to, uh, for coffee beans, um, but eventually someday I hope to find them and to kind of reinvigorate them into the next um, showing, which we're already talking about uh, two platforms. Um, this connection with the Brew Museum is really exciting um, because it, uh, it brings in a whole other element of people who are excited about drinking and, and documenting it. Um, Lucas, what's that program you, you post your beer shots to? Oh, yeah, uh, untapped, right? Yeah. Check into my beer. <laughs> right, so I'm not super into technology. I don't know how much I want to dip, dip into it, um, but it's essentially the same thing that we've been doing with the Libation Show. Um, somebody has a beer, they photograph it, they post it, they talk about where they are, and they share a sense of community, with maybe not without being in with anybody. Um, so back in, uh, I think it was the 2006 show, the show got some recognition. Um, and, oh, no, this is actually the 2005 show. Um, it got some recognition, and uh, we had a little article on the Post Tribune. And I was really proud of that, um, the idea of getting people to think about celebrating the little moments that make the big moments versus just the big moments. And um, flash forward, so we're at 2000. Uh, seven that show kind of ended and then flash forward i'm in um memphis tennessee uh we went to take the kids to see uh graceland um you know american uh piece of america elvis's home and uh i typically like to wake up about 4 35 in the morning and then the kids and i would always go down to the poolside get the free breakfast at the country inn and i always bring a giant box of art supplies and uh, about 6.30 in the morning, my son, who's pictured here, um, just spontaneously or uh, knowing that I would take interest in it because he sees me enthusiastically order uh, vodka martinis with blue cheese olives, if they're available, he drew this uh, martini at the age of six and um, asked me if I want to buy it. And I said, well, how much is it? He says, it's $10. And I says, I'll give you 20 and uh, I still have the work of art. I love it. And it, it ended up being the foundation for um, a new platform for kind of the same uh, celebratory art being made about beverages themselves. And we, we thought long and hard. I had four art therapy interns working with me at the time, and they were just the most amazing group of young women who really uh, had such a passion for reflecting and talking and thinking about things exhaustively. Um, and together, uh, it was that group of students and myself 
um, that really uh, worked hard to create a platform to celebrate Drake's amazing work of art here. And, um, you know, talking to a, talking to a six-year-old who's now a 12-year-old, the story changes. But what I remember when I asked him what this spiral thing was uh, uh, next to it, he, I remember him saying that's the intoxicating effect of the, of the alcohol. And that's pretty profound for a young person. And um, there's a lot more to this that I'd like to investigate um, related to the perception of alcohol um, that children may have uh, witnessing others, their parents consume alcohol. Um, so it's, it's a very powerful piece. I think it's a wonderful work art and I know he's a wonderful little boy. So the 2017 lecture series, we really wanted to up the ante beyond my 18 photographs and key, the key word there is my. I really wanted to um, celebrate Drake's art and put a call out for artworks. We put an official call out for artwork. And a lot of the um, young ladies I was talking about that were um, part of our uh, educational art therapy component with the internships um, being offered through the charity and through my other services at the Cook County Jail as art therapist um, and the Cook County Juvenile Detention Center. And that included uh, Caitlin, um, Amanda, and Emily at the time. And then a couple volunteers that were working with the program uh, really passionately. Um, so we put the call out, we tried to get people enthusiastic about making art, and um, obviously my son was in the show, but it, it pretty much stopped there. Um, and then we thought, well, what can we do to bring more conversation or more attention to the, the, the idea of celebrating the beverage, the, the libation, the drink? Um, so we asked um, individuals within our, within our circle um, if they would consider picking a topic and talking about it. And yours truly, right there, Lucas Livingston, um, gave a talk, um, and that was wonderful. And this time it included upping the ante to uh, recognize um, overconsumption and its detrimental uh, effects on human beings, individuals, their families, our community at large, and society, and the echoing effect of addictions, whether it's alcohol or drugs or um, whatever it is that takes you over the edge of overconsumption and over preoccupation with, with uh, drinking. Um, so Lori here and Bill, um, Lori's a professional addictions counselor and she'll be talking this time around as well. And uh, Bill is an officer at the Cook County Jail and um, a colleague that I respect unmeasurably. Uh, he and his wife have uh, uh, gone above and beyond helping other individuals. In fact, uh, just about this time, I remember there was someone on the expressway um, threatening to hurt themselves and they literally pulled off, um, not on the job, and were able to help this individual maintain his wellness, not hurt himself. Um, and then there was Dr. Fox. Dr. Fox is a uh, professor at the Adler University uh, program here in Chicago. And um, she was very supportive to help to uh, bring a, a level of legitimacy to a, a coloring book that I produced um, around the show. So it's an adult coloring book about drinking, about alcohol, libations. And um, that project was um, put together for uh, two particular focuses. One, to bring the art, bring the conversation to the community, but also to work to bridge a dialogue between what had become and is very popular adult coloring books and the field of art therapy, um, uh, which I'm a, a 30 year member of, and a resentment between art therapy and art therapists where Walgreens, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels were selling um, books and selling lots of books that had the words art therapy, art therapy coloring book. So I produced my book as an art therapy adult coloring book about drinking alcohol and conversations around um, consumption of alcohol and other non-alcoholic drinks um, to create a dialogue and a build a bridge between those two communities and recognizing the value of adult coloring where people could go home and instead of binge watching you know an entire series at night on Netflix actually engaging a creative process that could help healthfully occupy some of their time and attention um, celebrating the effects of color mixing colors staying in the lines going outside the lines all the cool things that art does and adult coloring is definitely a platform 
to start or stay there or maybe start with that and then move on to other medias. So she had talked about that and Emily's presentation I thought was fantastic. Um, she talked about um, Jägermeister as a popular, uh, a popularly known drink that people kind of do shots on and get sick, young people. Um, but it's actually a, um, a spectrum of alcohol that was created to help with digestion um, as, a, as a digestive aid. And then I talked about my coloring book and just my general passion about libations and um, uh, beverages. Um, so it was a lecture series that was super cool. And I was super proud of uh, bringing uh, people who are talking about addictions, actual AA members, 12 step program promoters into an active bar that was serving alcohol. And as an art therapist, uh, working with lots of special needs populations, in and out of corrections, um, uh, nine years at the Cook County Victim Witness Program, helping families that had lost immediate loved ones through homicide, violent crimes. My mission's always been uh, pretty simple. If you can't transform, if you can't change the situation, transform the way you think about it. And that doesn't making peace. That doesn't mean making peace with bad things. It means adjusting yourself so that you can maintain uh, your sobriety, your stability, and your ability to function um, in the world that we're living in. So the uh, adult coloring book and the focus on the uh, libations exhibition is a small part of that spectrum. But the idea of engaging and doing something, uh, whether it's a memorial candle or uh, listening to music, a spectrum of activities. So here is the, the talk. Um, I did my best to promote the show. I did my best to uh, get people to uh, rise to the level of either participating as artists to be a part of the exhibition um, or to, in this case, um, offer their expertise and talk about their experiences and give these talks. So if you look at the photograph, I could describe each of those persons as one of the speakers. So the whole audience that uh, came for the event were all people that were either showing artists or giving a talk. Um, thankfully, we videotaped it and it, beca uh, it, it became a renewable resource that we look forward to um, sharing some of these powerful uh, presentations that were given as this, this exhibition continues on. Uh, we'd like to keep, keep it going. Um, getting ready for this talk and creating this PowerPoint was extremely empowering for me because um, I kind of forget getting older, like how long uh, we've been focusing on this and trying to uh, bring attention to it. So 2017 uh, participants for this show were the ones that were here a part of the show last time. Um, no, 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 this is 2017. So those are, those are the people we listed before. And this missing part of the PowerPoint presentation, um, I wanted to leave it in because I've not had the opportunity to document all the participating artists work. Um, but I did want to respectfully go through their names because um, I think it would be very disrespectful not to recognize them as part of helping to build a community and build an opportunity for people to make art. And obviously, every one of you out there are very welcome to participate in the next series. Um, so the 2020 uh, exhibition and lecture series, as uh, Lucas pointed out, is currently at the Fluid Coffee Roasting Lab and Lounge in Michigan City. And it really is a lab. Um, when you go in there, you could see, you could feel, you can smell, um, and you can most importantly taste the passion that they bring into roasting beans. And uh, with great care, uh, working as baristas, these are people who have a real art, a real sense of art in putting these beverages together. Uh, the owner, Allison herself, when Isis and I were there hanging the show, uh, came in with her husband and talked with her crew and some of her crew um, are also her actual family members, her daughters, daughter and a uh, potential daughter-in-law um, were there and um, she herself said, well, let me make you something special. And she made these drinks. I, I, sorry, I don't, Allison, remember the name of the drinks, but they were blue on the bottom and they had all these layers just floating, floating in the glass, different layers of material that she put in there and um, served us with a big smile. They were yummy, very yummy. Um, so if you get a chance, don't definitely go check out our new partners at Fluid uh, Coffee Roasting Lab and take your time in there. Don't rush in and expect a drink like in, in a second like you would at, you know, at a fast food restaurant that 
is just pumping these things out. Um, be prepared to kind of sit back. They literally have like auditorium seating at the one where the show is. They built like these auditorium seats. So you can order your drink and you can literally sit uh, um, three feet, six feet, eight feet in the air watching over the barista as they, as they passionately prepare your drink. Um, so if you're in a hurry, um, stop being in a hurry and go over there and get a drink. And if you're not in a hurry, go over and visit our friends at Fluid in Michigan City, Indiana, and uh, take the time to really soak in an amazing, magical environment they created. So the participating artists um, that participated last time, um, I asked people to donate their artwork to the exhibition. Uh, we are a 501c3 charity uh, recognized by the federal government and we um, uh, petitioned and we are allowed to operate in the state of Illinois and the state of Indiana. Um, so they donated their artwork to the exhibition and they'll, they'll continue to ongoingly uh, exhibit with the show. So even though some of these people are no longer actively a part of the show, they are actively a part of our community. And we wanna thank each one of them and uh, honor them, uh, their participation by having their names here and their art up in the show. And then again, we, we kind of up the ante to put a call out for people to um, give a talk. And one of our new colleagues uh, runs another phenomenal facility that if you're in a hurry, you actually can go in there because this woman is fast. Uh, Rebecca Raspberry will be giving a lecture. What day is the Rebecca Raspberry's uh, talk, Lucas? Yeah, that is in three weeks. Okay, uh, don't, don't miss it. Uh, she, is, she is an amazingly passionate person. And this time, not so much about uh, coffee, but specifically freshly made juice. Um, she opened a juice bar in Gary, Indiana's uh, Miller Beach section uh, with a small, um, I recall it being more of the juicer you would have for your own personal use. And she's gone from that machine to a, a huge flock of people that come to her, I think now third and probably final location. She has a beautiful building and she has it set up super cool. She serves, um, she serves cauliflower in a way that you think you're eating uh, buffalo, buffalo, uh, bar buffalo wings. So any vegetarians or vegans out there, or people who eat meat just want to take a break. Um, it was so good. I was a vegetarian for 27 years. No leather, no, um, no leather, uh, no um, meat, obviously no meat. And um, oh, I was a pacifist, but that only lasted for six months. I got in a fight. Um, so, and then 27 years later, I ended up starting to eat meat again. Um, but as a regular meat eater, that cauliflower buffalo wing thing was so good. I ordered another one right there and then, uh, cause it was just so tasty. I got through it. But Rebecca is a new speaker and she'll be talking about the benefits of detoxing, not specifically to alcohol or, um, you know, any specific thing in life, but we all, we live in a, a fairly toxic world at times emotionally toxic people around us and uh, toxic news and a lot of challenging things. So um, she really is a, a nice person to be around. It's a very nice facility and you will become uh, appropriately addicted to her drinks uh, after one or two of them. My son, who's now 12, anytime we go down Lake Street, he's a, he, he, his brain, his brain stem just starts popping. If he can get this blueberry something or other, he loves to drink. Um, they're very, very tasty. Um, and obviously we have a, a beautiful group of people now participating for the 2020 uh, Libations Show. And we have the individuals that were here last time, we have their artwork up and we have some new people joining us. So welcome Cynthia, welcome Janet and Andrew, Ingeborg, uh, Jim uh, and Lucas and his uh, amazing wife, Corinne, uh, on her own artwork and their amazing son. So a nice group of art to see there. Um, but I'm here today to talk about my uh, passion about this, and I'm going to um, become a little more vulnerable in a second here and show them. It seems like we might have lost Eric's connection. Hopefully just a, a short-term glitch. <laughs> Chatting with Eric on the phone here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is happening live. <laughs> Yeah, what uh, Eric is about to show in his PowerPoint. There was a question someone was asking on Facebook 
uh, about the availability, Eric, of your coloring book. So just put that in the back of your mind for when you get back online here, uh, you can share. Hey, I'll put you on speakerphone until you join back in. <laughs> All right, Eric's on speakerphone, ladies and gentlemen. This is, this the, uh, is amazing yeah, we technology. Can't, we can't. We just got to switch over here. Um, it's not letting me sign back in, but I'm going to keep trying. But as we're sure. working on this, um, I wanted to say thank you for your interest in the coloring book. Um, I'm proud to say over the COVID uh, isolation crisis, uh, we were able to hand out 151 uh, free copies. Uh, all you got to do is email um, me at time for ink T-I-M-E-F-O-R-I-N-K, at gmail.com, and we'd be happy to send out one. However, um, as a part of the charity's outreach and uh, the need to raise some money, uh, we are asking people to consider making an $8 donation to the charity, to our PayPal, and we will email you on a copy. And then hard copies are available for $14 um, if you'd like a hard copy. Um, and the coloring book um, has about 60 images that you can color. And what I'm going to show you when I get back on with you all um, the uh, artwork that I created. Um, so the problem here, Lucas, is that I actually lost my uh, connection to the internet at my aunt uncle's house. Okay. So I, I'm going to try to sign in with my cell phone because the laptop cut oh. me off, and then maybe you can go back and show the slide. Yep, we'll do. Yeah, if you okay. join by your cell phone, join the Zoom, and then I'll do the. I'll share the slides. Okay. Here. So, and while we're waiting for Eric to, uh, to jump back in here, I'll, uh, I'll share a bit. So coming up, we have in the, uh, the libation series continuing, uh, continuing next week. Actually, it's every Wednesday this month, throughout the month of August, we'll be, have the speaker series uh, exploring the uh, celebratory and ceremonial aspects of drinking and beverages, alcoholic and non, uh, but also exploring the, uh, yeah, the negative consequences of, uh, of dependence and overindulgence on um, uh, alcoholic beverages. Uh, and so um, next week, uh, Eric already hinted at um, coming up, Lori, uh, Lori uh, Coppering, who will be speaking, and Lori is a licensed mental health counselor, and so she'll be speaking on uh, addictions and the triggers of trauma. That'll be very interesting. Then uh, after that, in uh, uh, two weeks, that's, oh, so I should say, you know, the date, Wednesdays, 6 p.m. Central Time, August 12th, and then on uh, August 19th, Wednesday the 19th, also 6 p.m. Central Time, uh, I'll be speaking. <clears throat> on uh, a little bit of a, uh, a different topic, exploring in this sense more of the celebratory and ritualistic aspects of drinking historically. Specifically, I'll be looking a lot at ancient Greece, you know, one of my specialties, uh, exploring what I'm um, entitled uh, Alcohol's Magic in Antiquity, Fermentation, Intoxication, Metamorphosis, and Madness. So, uh, exploring back how uh, 2,000 years ago alcohol was already this, this um, uh, exploring this idea of how alcohol did change us as we consume it. And then the final, uh, fourth and final uh, presentation in our libation series on Wednesday, August 26th uh, with uh, Rebecca Raspberry, who is the, uh, the owner and proprietor of uh, Vibrations wellness uh, juice bar and cafe in uh, Miller Beach, Gary, Indiana, uh, that uh, she will be exploring. Uh, well, a wonderful title, uh, Go Fruit Yourself. I love it. <laughs> so the benefits of a detox through juicing. Um, so yeah, whether, uh, whether a lot of us like to take a break from consuming alcohol during dry or, uh, you know, if we're going to be uh, detoxing for that next marathon that we're going to run, you know, or going full bore teetotaler. Uh, so there's, there's a lot we can do to enhance our well-being through, uh, through the benefits of, of juicing uh, and teas and herbs and other supplements. Rebecca will be exploring those, uh, that subject with us uh, three weeks from tonight. 
hashtag wellness Wednesdays, right? This, uh, and so I didn't even think about that when we scheduled this for, for Wednesdays. It's a big hashtag on, on the internet, uh, uh, wellness Wednesdays. So you can, you can check that out. Uh, he's just oh. in there now. Fantastic, sir. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I just like to share I'm sweaty from here to my toes right now. I think I've been keeping them moderately entertained. I know you have. Uh, I told all of your best jokes. Oh. So, <laughs> but I'm sharing the screen here so uh, we can just pick up right here where we are if that works for you. Feel free to just keep telling me to go next slide. These are uh, shots from the coloring book. So the black and white there. Uh, a line art and as well, of course, as uh, Eric's lovely hand colored originals. <laughs> and there's a story behind each and every one of these, right, Eric? That's, that's true. That's <laughs> true. And some of the stories include particular people, uh, very special people in my life that mm -hmm. last slide um, or places. This is a place in Hammond, Indiana. Even as a kid, I always thought what a great place that would be to go or like someone should film a movie there. Um, that's my beautiful wife. Uh, this October 14th, we'll celebrate 15 years of marriage together as friends and co-parents. And that's John. He's one of our participating artists and an amazing soul. Uh, he's got a big knife in his mouth there, but that's a um, Bloody Mary that I created at his mom and dad's summer home. Uh, just a little moment, just a little snapshot of a time and space. That's Vernell. He was working on a house and I brought him some coffee and we spiked it and just had an amazing conversation together. So there's a picture of two people standing together who have a, a, a meaningful relationship. But more importantly, there's the libation that uh, represented a, a particular moment in time that could be lost and just kind of mixed in with the pictures of faces. Um, so I like that one a lot. One of my favorite haunts in Chinatown, nothing like a bacon bun and a cup of hot milk tea. My friend Denise and a fellow art therapist at the Cook County Jail taught me how to get a dollar coffee at the uh, Starbucks at the Target and to get some ice cream and make a, I always say it wrong, Fergata. I think it's called Fergata. Excellent beverage, right there in the lobby of Target. Uh, that's Emily. She was one of our students and uh, took on a, a unpaid position for a year amazingly within the charity. And we were able to travel to Italy to present at the sustainability conference, uh, talking about uh, tattoo removal, tattoo transformation, uh, star transformation um, to an international audience there. And we actually were able to forge relationships with local tattoo artists on the ground. Uh, nothing's panned out from it yet, but we did it. Uh, specifically with a father of a, uh, a son who had experienced um, self-mutilation, uh, cutting, and had done tattoos, transforming his son's scars. So despite the communication and the uh, kind of disorientation of travel, we made it to Anzio, a seaside community, and were able to, um, I believe still, something that could be reinvigorated, um, a possibility of serving African refugees that we took uh, applications from we were there for the presentation, to set a precedent of need. Um, that's what we provide here. But that was a you know bubbly water we had, and an amazing conversation that led to um, some really really good good things. It's my aunt and uncle. I'm at their house right now in Riverside, and there's a local tiki tiki legend uh, legend bar here, restaurant, a Cantonese restaurant that's been open forever, and it's just a cup of water by the fountain there. I don't remember the story behind this, and I just like the Coors label. Um, any Aldi fans out there, I love Aldi, and I love their box clammy shells. So that's a gin and juice and some freshly made uh, Aldi clammy shells. My daughter and I uh, had some amazing times taking or uh, pretending to take ukulele lessons together, and um, that's a ukulele that belonged to my grandfather, and just some time on the balcony and some reminiscent photos when she was younger. She's now 13. Valparaiso, Indiana, where they know how to serve a tiny martini like back in the day. And a uh, nice place to check out, Tony's Place in Valparaiso, Indiana. If anyone's fascinated by taxidermy, I think they have the largest collection of taxidermied animals 
including two tigers that uh, had to be um, uh, brought down because allegedly they were eating human beings someplace in Africa. Uh, so the restaurant's full of antique taxidermy and they serve these uh, phenomenal little baby martinis. I don't remember the story. Uh, a phenomenal walk with my son out in the National Park. Uh, uh, 2006, they got me the Scooby-Doo thermos on the right, which is full of hot cocoa for him and uh, the stainless steel thermos uh, coffee for Papa. Great conversations, great big long hike together. And just again, a moment um, and so much more of that moment that we shared together. For me, I can recall it by looking at this drawing or looking at the photograph I took of the, the libations at that moment. Uh, more so than I would remember it if I saw a picture of us standing together at the peak of the hike, smiling, you know, giving each other that that little hug that you take in photographs, and then you kind of get on walking. So like Danny DeVito's change, when I see these drawings that I've done, the time that goes into creating the, the line drawing for the coloring book, and then my own personalizing uh, color in that sheet, um, it, it really does bring back a lot more of an internalized uh, place a place and time for me. Yeah, that reminds me, you know, this, uh, what you're saying is you remember it more than, than just if you were looking at uh, a photo of you all. Uh, it's something my son was tuning into an uh, educational uh, science program and they, they uh, demonstrated that people have greater recollection of uh, events if they don't take a picture of them if they just actually concentrate on the moment, live in it, rather than snapping a photograph of everything you just remember better. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that, but I'd also argue that, you know, with um, the, the, the increased number of people with dementia and, um, you know, we know that we only use a portion of our brain and I'm, I'm a big fan of thinking that when we use, when we think creatively, we behave creatively, we sing and dance, we're using other parts of our brain that we typically wouldn't be able to access. Um, so I think that uh, these are snapshots of moments like Roy from Blade Runner that, that really get into a different part of our brain mass that are accessible in, in a different kind of way. Um, both my kids love sardines. I love canned, canned fish and just the Stella and some um, you know freshly opened uh, sardines on a plate there my son at the Ikea having some water and he was himself as you can see drawing the water and I was drawing him drawing the water. Uh, out with my wife um, for a nice bowl of uh, miso soup and some nice cold beers and speaking of my wife Lucas if you can go back to that single cup in the snow just a couple there this is an important one. Um, I'm also uh, obsessed with my coffee cups. I love coffee in the morning, and I don't know if people out there don't really care what cup they drink out of, or if they have a personality or a relationship with the cup, but I have a, um, I would say, a kind of obsessive relationship with all my cups. And I took a bartending class, and I learned the importance of uh, the right type of uh, glassware for the right type of drink. Lucas and I will be working on an um, exhibition uh, related to the phenomena of tiki culture and tiki drinks and tiki beverages. But this particular cup um, was bought in uh, Shibanik in Croatia uh, by the lovely young lady pictured there who I mentioned uh, we celebrate 15 years of life together and two children and um, lots of ups and downs and easy conversations and hard conversations. Um, but when we were completely um, physically, mentally and kind of freshly just smitten with each other there on our seventh date in Croatia, beautiful time in our life. Um, we were at an outdoor market and she bought me that coffee cup and it's, it's one of my absolute favorite coffee cups. So I love drinking out of it. And this was uh, one of those mornings where Papa got up to shovel our massive driveway. And I went outside with my hot cup of uh, coffee and my favorite cup and took a couple sips and dropped it in the snow on top of her car and got to shovel and, and um, you know, would I have taken a picture of the snow on the driveway? Would I have taken a picture of, of uh, just that moment, that, that kind of father, papa, husband moment of getting outside to shovel? Probably not, um, but capturing the cup in the snow, melting the snow, um, it, all, it all floods back and it brings a lot of purpose and meaning um, to that moment, so, yep. 
my buddy Ty, uh, my brother from another mother, love Ty, and my sister from another mother, Trish, there on the bottom with Ty dressed as, as a uh, big animal of some sort. I think he was a beaver. Um, but that's the last cup of coffee we shared together in a really great conversation. Um, so uh, drawn and then from the coloring book and then colored and personalized for me. This is a uh, warmed Frangelica and a brandy sniffer at the Red Arrow Highway Bar up in uh, uh, Union Pier, Michigan. Very nice moment. Proud to say that someone bought that piece. The original works of art are available um, for $60 donations to the charity. Um, I will recolor them, um, but the piece you would be getting is a framed original colored uh, work of art. So if anyone's out there interested, you can go to our website and the pieces are available. Um, I'm very happy and thankful that that piece sold. What's the link to your website, Tattoo? It's a, a tattooarttherapy.org, tattooarttherapy.org. This is a, um, a lavender uh, gin drink they serve at a place called, um, oh, it's a hamburger shop in Chesterton, Indiana. Tsegi, not Tsegi. Who's the guy who made the airplane? Octavia, Octavia Grill. They serve this phenomenal gin drink that's uh, got uh, purple lavender in it. And it's yummy. It's a yummy drink. And they serve it with a lime. Coca-Cola. This is a, a couple beers that I had. Uh, did I say that right, Lucas? Beers? Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> with you and uh, Greg uh, Woodworth over at 18th Street Brewing Company in Gary, Indiana, our hometown for now, my hometown. And uh, just a great, great guy conversation with two great men and uh, really, really an important little crossroads there. Um, we live in a pretty unique home and this is, uh, I like to wake up before the sun. And there, we picked up these uh, food dogs from a Chinese restaurant, these giant food dogs. And this is uh, just before we, I descend down to our home tiki lounge. Um, so I had my cup of coffee, one of my favorite tattoo cups, and just uh, got a picture of it going down the stairs. And there's a work of art. Uh, this has become a popular piece in the coloring book. People seem to like to color all the leaves. Our house is surrounded by Japanese knotweed. Uh, on the way back from Hawaii at the airport, some overpriced uh, um, fruity fruity uh, vodka drinks enjoyed with my wife. We had a couple of these and just reflecting on an amazing trip together. Um, so all the pictures in Hawaii, all the different Hawaii trips or how Hawaii experiences, um, this, this, this drawing and the color, colored version of it really again personalizes and brings me back to the moment where we got to actually sit down, slow down, and reflect on um, what I believe to be a really great family experience. I love the colors in all of these illustrations, Eric. There's a certain type of marker you love, right? What's what that kind of marker? I've become addicted. If they have a 12-step program for gel markers, I might want to go to one at some point because I really just can't say no to them. And uh, even my kids know like the quality brands. Um, they both gave me their list of things they need for school and they both kind of snuck in there the expensive uh, version of the, of the um, gel markers. So gel markers, watercolors. This watercolor was actually done by Emily Kay of one of my drawings. And then I uh, re-inked a lot of the lines that had gotten washed over from the watercolor, um, but really fun collaboration. And these fellas that are pictured here, the guy in the middle, I think is 103. And he owned and operated a Juan Cow restaurant in Chicago. Um, and he was the second generation. So it's been in business consecutively. Um, as far as like Chicago lore, he would always say Al Capone walked up those stairs um, and that's his son. And it was a place you can get uh, tiki cocktails. And I'm uh, happy to say I got one more before they just surprisingly to everyone's um, um, just blown away that they locked the door and said the place was closed. So, and I ran into them and they recognized me because I used to go a lot. And we took a nice picture together at the um, Steak and Agar. They were getting breakfast at the Steak and Agar on Cermak. I've been uh, wanting the doors from the restaurant. I hope to get them someday. Mm. Kids, it's some sugary, uh, sugary uh, breakfast cereal. So the leftover milk from breakfast cereal, libation, 
I use it for my coffee. Sweet. Um, back to Hawaii, a nice picture of some beer my wife picked up on our balcony. I was there uh, in my uh, PhD residency um, uh, studying and I was able to bring my family and they got to have fun during the day. We had fun during the night, like a weekend. And uh, it was really nice to come back to that cold beer. This is an amazing piece that John Sebe did. So there's my drawing. And if you turn your head, I couldn't figure out how to turn this just yet. Um, he did these heavy, heavy watercolors where the paper became almost like a pulp. And uh, it was such a, such a saturation of the paper, um, he ended up actually displaying them in reverse. And one thing I didn't mention, um, which is a huge exercise on my part, um, we have a huge building in Gary, Indiana that we're restoring to be our new headquarters. And like any property, it's vulnerable because um, it's by itself. Um, and some knuckleheads have broken in there a couple of times. And of all the things they could steal, um, they stole all the original Libations artwork. So I had done about 45 pieces. Um, John did about 12 or so of these and other, other artists, um, Caitlin's piece was stolen. Um, some, some of the pieces weren't stolen, but they stole all the frame Libations art. And uh, you know, you kind of just shrug your shoulders and say, well, that's gone. But um, it was really hard to kind of want to relaunch the show. So I had, ended up taking on as a spiritual exercise and I recolored all the pieces that had been taken and then con I continued to produce them. I again want to thank Drink Von Spruth, my son, for inspiring the exhibition. This is a recent portrait of him sipping on some hot cocoa and an original portrait. When I first met him, um, uh, he had that uh, condition where the skin is discolored and he has to be wrapped in a little life blanket. Um, but that's a first photograph I shot of him when he was newly born. And I, I just really appreciate the time I get to share with him and his sister, Isis Violet, and she's a participant in the exhibition. And mommy, Sarah Spruth, is an exhibition participant. Um, hopefully we're going to get her joining the lecture series about um, keeping hydration exciting and fun for children. Um, and she's got some particular products and uh, things available that um, really, really do just that. So hopefully this next time around, you'll be hearing her talk about uh, keeping kids hydrated and uh, hydration being fun. And, uh, oh, last but not least, the uh, charity is called Sacred Transformations. Our website is called tattooarttherapy.org, O-R-G. We are a federally recognized uh, non -for profit And for 17 years, um, we have provided free tattoo and scar transformation. And for about the last four or five years through a collaboration with uh, Bear Tattoo Removal here in Chicago, Atlanta, um, uh, state-of-the-art tattoo removal studio, um, a partnership we have with them and a partnership with Estanza in Dallas, Texas. I became certified as a laser technician. And we provide free laser removal uh, for tattoo fading. And we primarily provide transformations of existing marks. So we help uh, individuals who are survivors of human trafficking have marked as uh, sex slaves. We transform those marks. Um, people uh, marked demonstratively with criminal organizations. If you'd like to learn more, check out our website. And we have a lot of additional, um, additional services that are, are transformative in the way that we uh, create opportunities for people to think differently. I mentioned the state's attorney's uh, homicide support program. Um, creating memorial candles. Uh, we have a program that was um, started by my wife and I through our, uh, her pregnancies, our pregnancies, however it's appropriate to say nowadays, uh, where we did belly casting of her breast and belly to celebrate the transformation of her body. Um, and that's a program that was fostered and uh, brought to the public very successfully by Amanda Tao and other partnerships with peer professionals. Um, where we provide free art therapy services for mothers, expected moms and their families, uh, body casting them. They keep a casting. Um, they get to work with the art therapy process to decorate it, personalize it. The whole family's involved if, if appropriate. And then we go back and do a casting of the casting and we've retained them. We have about 50 of those. We are at a launch and exhibition uh, to help people in, in the world think differently about um, what women go through to create life for our planet. And the fact is they primarily just get a lot of grief for it. So it's really popular for people to say, look, she, look how wonderful she looks. She looks like she, she didn't even just have a baby. 
versus like, you know, she's got a baby belly or isn't that great? Like she made life, she has a child. Um, so uh, that exhibition is up and coming, but more importantly, the continuation of the service. Um, we provide art therapy services for um, communities that are uh, generally not accessible to such services. So we go directly into uh, apartment complexes in Gary, Indiana. We had a window of time where Jennifer, um, Jennifer, Amanda, Emily, and um, Leslie all went in for probably about two and a half years and provided weekly art therapy for the kids there. So Sacred Transformations is not just about tattooing and tattoo removal. Uh, it really is about transforming the way people um, think about the world around them and most importantly about themselves in that world. And that's what the libation show is about. The libation show and the beverage show are really about transforming something that seems really um, maybe not that significant. Uh, the opportunity to have a cup of coffee, the opportunity to have a drink, share a conversation over a drink with other people. So in the beginning, I said something that's important to me, which is thank you for your time, your attention. They're two of the most valuable things any of us have. If you're a millionaire, or you're struggling from moment to moment, to share your time and attention is a gift. And I appreciate that gift and the opportunity to reflect on something I think is important. I hope you're amused and I hope somehow uh, some part of this has an echoing effect. If you'd like to participate in the show, you contact me at this phone number or this email address. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about our charity, Sacred Transformations, check out our website, Tattoo Art Therapy. And last but not least, uh, there's some room here for comments, questions, or offerings. Uh, if you have a personal story you'd like to share, we'd love to hear it. Uh, if you have any questions about the exhibition or the charity or comments, bring them on. I only have one thing to say, and it's really shallow, but I found my colored pencils, and you can get these on on Amazon if you want to do the coloring books. Nice. And they come with like a hundred different pencils, and I bought them to do coloring books from the Art Institute. And oh, very cool. So you don't have to buy the fancy markers. You can just like get the whole colorama of the, the pencils. I love coloring books, so yeah. I'll probably order yours. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to see what you make of it. I'll have it uh, emailed to me as soon as you drop me an email, or if you want a physical copy, we could drop it in the mail. Well, I wouldn't want to show anyone anything I do. <laughs> oh well. But they did. I did buy those because I bought for my nieces um, some of the Art Institute coloring books, and I was like, these are so fun. I want one for myself. So I like that. Mm -hmm. And it's really therapeutic. It's cathartic. I agree. And that's, that's one of the things I was so happy that Dr. Haley Fox joined the momentum of the uh, program and legitimized the coloring book by writing the forward for it. So when you get your copy, um, dive in and listen to some of her words of wisdom about um, the similarity, but the important distinctions between art therapy services and recreational services and adult coloring being a bridge somewhere between that. And a lot of people who start with paint by numbers back in the 50s and 60s, it was a international phenomena. The guys sold millions and millions of the kits. And those guys that started paint by numbers owned a paint company and they were thinking of different ways they could sell their paint. That's how that got invented. And that turned into, um, that turned into an international phenomena of people again, going home, sitting down at a table and making art. So. If adult coloring books are, are successful in getting millions and millions of people around the world, like yourself, to buy a set of coloring pencils, and you know, you can say this is for my nieces, well, this is for my nieces, but you're doing it, and you if you find relaxation. Then I got one it, for me, but I mean, yeah. Lucas knows this very well. I studied art history, and I study art history to this day, because I have zero zero talent in anything. So I appreciate art, art artists because I could never be one. So. The color by number thing or the it's not color by number because the, the coloring books don't have numbers but i really enjoyed those because i have no artistic talent and i can still make something that looks nice well lucas mentioned the colors that i use are generally you know really um intended to make the eye vibrate so i i have a i have a sense of of commanding and making use of colors psychologically tertiary colors complementary colors um, but one of the things I like about coloring books versus the paint by numbers is someone's not telling you what to do. 
and your 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 investment in a coloring book maybe twelve dollars maybe five dollars could be at the dollar store it's not the end of the world and i i, I do like that personal freedom um with an adult coloring where i do love paint by number sets whenever i'm in an antique mall i photograph them because they're inevitably the last supper dogs horse heads i always photograph them and I did do a line of tiki related artwork to emulate the paint by number look. So I photographed my own tiki mug collection. I made made my own patterns. I, I designated the, the colors that would go in there. So it was somewhat monochromatic. And um, Lucas and I might work together to relaunch that, that line but of art. It was also really fun when my two nieces and I did the same book together. Mm. Because we would do the same drawing. And I did give them well, the one at the art institute it has it shows what some of the real ones look like but not all of them so when we would do the ones that they didn't show the colors on i knew what they looked like but they didn't so it was really fun to see what they did it and how i did it which was like the real picture but they'd never seen the real picture so they came up with something totally different mm -hmm. yeah that's cool there's no right or wrong yeah, yeah. like three Very of us came up with completely different interpretations sitting at the same table for an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, just thinking a lot also about just um, the coloring, adult coloring, and, and, and it's, it's uh, expressive therapeutic value it reminds me of there's another uh, organization that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in touch with uh, it, uh, La Brocha out, out of the, um, Chicago's uh, Pilsen neighborhood. And it's um, for serving um, Spanish speaking uh, residents who are living with dementia and their, their loved ones. And they issued uh, an adult coloring book that they're making available for free during coronavirus, mailing it and dropping it off at the homes of many of um, Chicago's families of people living with dementia. Uh, and so I'm just, I'll paste a link in the chat to that as well. It's, it's really interesting. They did a, like a crowdsource kind of um, thing to uh, get uh, artists to uh, create original illustrations that they then compiled into this this uh, adult coloring book specifically for people with dementia. So Luke, really cool. I don't know if you know how to do this, but my Italian class online, my teacher can send me the chat. Yeah. It'd be cool if you could send the chat so we have all those links. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I got a record of the chat here and, and uh, can, can uh, uh, share that. So, yeah, I mean, after we finish, <laughs> whose contact info I got? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great, fantastic. Um, any other thoughts, questions, comments? Anyone? I've been trying to keep uh, track on uh, uh, Facebook. I don't think we have any more uh, contributions in the chat on Facebook. Um, to, so, with that, uh, I think uh, I want to. Thank everyone so very much for, for tuning in tonight and uh, thank everybody who in the future will be watching us on, uh, on Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> and uh, also my thanks to, um, to Liz Garibay with the Chicago Bruseum um, for, uh, for helping us put all of this together and for hosting the Chicago Bruseum for hosting tonight's uh, presentation and um, you know, for making it happen. And thank you, Eric, for, um, for everything you did leading up to this and for tonight. Uh, it's, it's a real treasure. And we're just kicking off the series. So again, uh, hashtag Wellness Wednesdays. Tune in uh, same time next week and every Wednesday this month. Uh, different Zoom links. So you're going to want to uh, yeah, go to chicagobruseum.org uh, slash events to uh to get the, the zoom link for for each well, you'll send them out to us on your mailing list right i yeah you know for for many of you uh, i did yeah invite you to the, the um, i think i have the next three already right uh, right right okay. absolutely so you're set <laughs> and uh yeah and again just yeah during all of this time uh you know sacred transformations continues to do amazing things uh, chicago museum is uh, keeping us connected so you know visit chicagobruseum.org and donate visit uh, tattooarttherapy.org and donate to keep these wonderful organizations uh, alive uh, and uh, thanks everyone for for your support and for tuning in
Thank and you. Thank you, Eric. And uh, yeah, you all take care. Cheers. I uh, hope to see everyone next week. Next, next week. Bye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you.